What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are in the Ride Moto studio, but in just a second, we are gonna hop on the brand new 2023 BMW F900R motorcycle. This is BMW's middleweight naked bike motorcycle, and it is such a unique bike for a lot of different reasons. But one of the main reasons is that this bike has a parallel twin engine in it, which is common in the middleweight naked bike category, but not common for BMW. BMW is most well known for its boxer engine, or even to some extent, the inline four cylinder engine. So in this review video, we're gonna go through the engine, we're gonna go through the suspension, we're gonna go through the ergonomics of the bike, we're gonna cover the technology in this middleweight naked bike for which the motorcycle has a literal ton that you would come to expect out of any self-respecting BMW motorcycle. And then at the very end of the video, we're gonna go through who the intended rider is of this BMW F900R motorcycle. So come on, come along for the journey. Let's hop on the bike. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the channel. And as I mentioned today, we are on the 2023 BMW F900R. This is one of the most unique motorcycles that BMW offers because this motorcycle does not have a boxer engine. So when most people think about BMW motorcycles, they are going to think boxer engines and rightfully so because BMW does a heck of a job producing the boxer engine. This F900R is a middleweight naked bike with a parallel twin engine in it um, that's going to be akin to uh, the Yamaha MT-09, uh, Kawasaki's Z900R, or even the KTM 890R bike. It's kind of going to be in that category. So BMW um, intentionally wanted to design something that was going to compete against those bikes. And so the question is, how is a BMW motorcycle that does not have a boxer engine? So prior to this motorcycle, the most experience that I've had personally with the BMW engines and platforms has obviously been their 1250 boxer engine that is represented in the GS1250, GS1250 Adventure, and the R1250R. And that engine has so much characteristic, it's so much fun. And then even they have the Voxer engine inside of the R9T lineup, albeit that's gonna be a slightly smaller displacement at around 1200 cc's. And then BMW famously has an inline four cylinder engine that is represented in their S1000 double R single R and the M1000R double R lineup. Those engines are just so much fun. They're so aggressive and alive. But the question for today is how is a BMW F900R with a parallel twin engine in it Again, similar to like a Yamaha Tenere 700 or something like that. Um, so first impressions, uh, and we've been riding around on this motorcycle for a couple days now. And hey, as always, special thanks to the guys over at Irv Seaver BMW for letting us take out some motorcycles, put some miles on them, and we can bring them to you guys on the channel to talk through the good, the bad, the ugly of these motorcycles in general. But I can say that you know, I'll just start off by saying that, you know, for me personally, I think the the middleweight naked bike category is just something that it takes me a little while to get used to. You know, I think the, the middleweight category is just something that it always takes me a little bit of time to get used to. Honestly, because some of the motorcycles that we typically ride on this channel that I ride personally are engines that just have so much ridiculous amount of horsepower and torque that honestly for most people, it's not a usable amount of horsepower. What I mean is that these kind of middleweight uh, naked bike categories, it has a, a very linear power band on them. You can use a lot of the, the horsepower that's represented in the engine themselves, and you can use them in a very practical way. So uh, I can you know, manipulate the throttle in between 6,000 and 8,000 RPMs, and I don't feel like the motorcycle is getting away from me, which is something that I, I appreciate. Um, it, it certainly is not for everybody. This motorcycle is gonna be geared more towards I would say uh, entry level you know maybe intermediate rider while you know if you're looking for that motorcycle that's gonna kind of terrify you and just you know rip the socks off uh, this motorcycle or any uh, middleweight naked bike kind of category in that 900 cc range you're gonna feel like it's wanting a little bit but not to say that the motorcycle is not capable um, certainly capable of doing um, as fast as speeds as you reasonably need to on the highway around town. It's just going to feel a little bit different. So this parallel twin cylinder engine on the BMW F900, F900R is, look, it's good. 
Um, it, it's nothing to write home about. It is torquey, kind of going around town, in canyons, all of those things. But what I'll say about this engine is it's very safe. It's very usable. Uh, BMW is claiming that the engine itself is putting out about 100 horsepower with around 67 foot-pounds of torque, which is kind of good. It's right in the middle of the, uh, the bikes in this category. Uh, Yamaha's MT-09 is going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to have slightly higher output, but then again, it also has a three-cylinder triple engine on there. And then, you know, same thing with the KTM 890R, I believe, is going to be at the higher end of the spectrum at around 115 horsepower. So just something to know going into this, if you are looking at this motorcycle, that it's going to have a fine engine. Um, it's nothing that's going to terrify you, but it's, you're not going to feel lacking at all. It, it's kind of just right smack dab in the middle. It's a good, trusty engine. Again, it has usable amounts of power. If I wanted to take a bike out, to a track for a day, I might honestly gravitate towards uh, this 900cc kind of platform, something in that range, because it's not something that's going to get away from me. It's going to be something that's going to be easy to manipulate in corners, and I just really feel like I have a good amount of control over this motorcycle with this engine and platform in it. So the engine itself is good, I would say not great, but for the type of person that maybe is just starting off riding, uh, maybe you're a younger rider and you feel like you don't want something something that's going to rip your face off completely. This bike is going to be a great bike with a great platform on it. Um, six speed transmission on this motorcycle. It is going to come with a quick shifter and that is going to be kind of a theme that's going to be interwoven throughout this entire review is that this bike has a ton of tech features, but we're going to get into that during our tech section of the review. But this bike does have six gears on it, a quick shifter up and down. It's not the best quick shifter that we've seen on any motorcycle but it's certainly not the worst um, but it is uh, a long ways away from some of the upper echelon of BMW motorcycles like the K1600 Bagger or the K1600 GTL which those quick shifters are just like butter so the quick shifter works um, I don't know that I would choose to use it as much just given that it is a little bit clunky kind of when you're starting and stopping but there you go you have it if you want to use it um, kind of in line with the engine um, you are going to have a hydraulic front brake here. Interestingly enough, on this motorcycle, you are going to have a cable clutch, which is pretty unique for BMW. So I don't immediately remember any modern BMW motorcycles that don't have a hydraulic clutch line. So not sure why BMW chose to go that route. Um, if they just felt like it was easier to work on, or if maybe that was a way that they cut cost on this motorcycle. And it is worth mentioning, we'll talk a little bit about this later, that this motorcycle for a brand new BMW 2023 F900R is under $10,000. So the base model, I believe, is right around $9,000 US. Um, they do give you the option to spec it out uh, with some of those creature comforts to where it's landing right around $11,000. So really a tremendous uh, amount of value that you get for the money and certainly going to be one of the more inexpensive motorcycles that BMW has to offer. Uh, different ride modes. Uh, you are going to get different ride modes on this bike, which is really nice. So you're going to go through, you're going to have a rain mode, which is going to be like the most dumbed down kind of tame version of the motorcycle. Uh, you're going to have your road mode, just kind of standard. I'll say that we got this motorcycle in road mode and I was just very, very underwhelmed by it. Uh, the suspension felt a little bit soft and kind of plush. Um, the throttle wasn't super, super responsive. Um, so we immediately changed it into dynamic mode, which really makes your throttle a lot more snappy. The, the suspension tightens up. It feels more like a, a motorcycle that you would expect in the naked bike category. And then ultimately, um, we have the Dynamic Pro riding mode, which is going to give you the most aggressive throttle response uh, suspension package. And that is uh, the package that we have been riding around in, for the most part, over the past couple days. So yeah, I mean, I hope I don't feel like I'm just piling on uh, and that I don't like uh, this engine and kind of the platform. It's just, honestly, it's really different for BMW to make a motorcycle with this parallel twin engine. It just doesn't have uh, some of the rowdiness that the Boxer engine has that I've come to think is like almost synonymous with BMW. So this is just, it's interesting. It's just different. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just different. 
All right, guys. Well, next up, we are going to talk about the suspension on this motorcycle. And the suspension is what you would expect from a BMW sporty motorcycle. Um, the suspension really is very, very good on this bike. So this bike is going to come with uh, BMW's dynamic ESA suspension, which is going to be electronically controlled and being able to adjust the suspension on the fly, which is very nice. So that's going to be done through this little button here. Uh, you can change from dynamic uh, to the road mode on here. Uh, let's see if it'll let me do it. Nope, you can only adjust it when you are stopped, but you do have full ability to customize it just through something um, on your handlebars, which is pretty nifty and something you uh, would come to expect from BMW's motorcycle lineup. And that is going to be a huge, huge value add, especially in this, this middleweight naked bike kind of category that you're going to have that level of adjustment. Uh, that is going to be on the suspension all the way around if you look to the front of the motorcycle you are going to have inverted front forks on here and when this motorcycle is in the dynamic in the dynamic pro mode i mean the suspension feels very firm responsive you really get a good feeling of the road underneath you and i would say that this motorcycle suspension is just really really good especially in this this middleweight category i mean you feel firm you feel planted you feel in control of the motorcycle especially on uh, the 17 inch front and rear wheels this bike just wants to go fast and have some fun through the canyons which is where we are on our way to do so today so today we are in sunny southern california if you have watched any of our review videos in the past you probably recognize the area we are going through santiago canyon um, that's going to be a canyon with a kind of mountain range that separates orange county from riverside county and this has turned into our regular review route for motorcycles so up ahead of us we will get some canyons and twisties that we get to kind of take this motorcycle through which this motorcycle can do very, very well. One thing I will say is this bike, um, which I guess is a good thing, uh, the suspension varies dramatically depending on what ride mode you are in. So as I mentioned, when I first got the bike, I was riding around in the road mode itself and the suspension was just, it was soft, it was comfortable. Uh, almost leisurely which I guess is nice if you're you know just gonna be doing kind of everyday riding maybe you choose to commute on this motorcycle what have you uh, you do have a wide range of just suspension feel on the motorcycle uh, based on the different ride modes you're in for a motorcycle like this um, you know I want to have fun on this I want to rip through canyons I want to take twisties I want to ride this bike in a very very sporty mode uh, so I for the most part just keep the motorcycle in the dynamic mode um, and the suspension really does feel very very good on the bike so no complaints and honestly i would expect nothing less from bmw's lineup of bikes they've always done a really really good job in the suspension world of kind of making that balance between comfort and performance we've talked about that scale a lot in some of our past reviews specifically about the bmw motorcycles it just seems like their philosophy and how they design bikes if you know, on one side of the pendulum, you have just total performance orientation. And then on the other side, you have just creature comforts, plushness. It seems like BMW really tries to be smack dab in the middle of those things. So not too performance oriented, not too just posh. They really kind of thread the needle right in the middle of those things. And I think the same thing is true for their suspension. Uh, you do have the ability to make it pretty firm and responsive, or you can make it plush and just reasonable to ride down the road in a good amount of comfort. And speaking of comfort, that leads us into our third section, and we're going to talk about the ergonomics on this motorcycle. So as you can tell, this is a naked bike, so you're going to be somewhere in between a cruiser stance, so you're not going to be upright, but you're also not going to be completely hunched over like you would be on a full-blown sport bike. You're kind of somewhere in the middle so you're upright enough to where you can stretch out your back if you need to or if you want to get just crazy through the corners I mean you can duck down and really hug the tank itself so I've really come to enjoy the ergonomics of the naked bike category I feel like it's a good kind of happy medium um, the seat on this is decent it's certainly better than uh, some of the flat kind of scrambler seats on some of those motorcycles but you're gonna have a little tiny bit of arch support uh, in between the rider and the passenger pillion. 
this is not a motorcycle that I would personally recommend taking the missus onto. Um, didn't even offer it to her to see, you know, what passenger accommodations are going to look like. But certainly for just a single person rider, the seat is decent. One thing that I did notice about this motorcycle is you're going to sit right around uh, 30 inches. So um, you're going to sit relatively low on this motorcycle. So it's going to come in at a 30 inch seat height, which is a lot lower than a lot of motorcycles, especially when you're going to compare this to a bikes that are going to be more in the sport bike category or something like that. And that low seat height with the very aggressive um, rider foot pegs are not going to give you a ton of room. Um, so if you are a taller rider, um, this might not be the best motorcycle for you. Um, you are going to feel like you are a little bit cramped um, with just how your legs are able to, to stretch out. All right, next up in the ergonomic world, and it kind of goes without saying, but on this motorcycle, you do not have any sort of front fairing to keep the wind off of you. So just know that if you are looking to get this motorcycle and you have longer commutes or something that you do on a regular basis, you are going to have to navigate just wind on your chest and kind of the fatigue that that causes to a rider long term. But chances are, if you are looking at the naked bike category, that is something that you hopefully have already considered. And if you are looking for a little bit of wind deflection, you're gonna to wanna to look for another type of motorcycle. So just something to know that you are gonna feel all of that wind on your chest all the time. So something to just be mindful of. I think one of the things that I do like about this motorcycle is actually that lower seat height. Um, this bike is gonna be easy to navigate at lower speeds, um, which is nice. Uh, it does feel pretty confidence inspiring and you can take this motorcycle and go through parking lots and not have to feel like um, it's hard to put your foot down or something like that. So um, most people are gonna be able to flat foot this motorcycle. I am five foot 10 with a 30 inch inseam and I can flat foot the bike um, relatively easy on both pegs. And so uh, most people are gonna be um, just very, very comfortable on this motorcycle. So there you go, ergonomics overall good. One thing I will say is that I appreciate about this motorcycle as opposed to um, some of the the triple engines on some of this motorcycle's competitors is this bike really doesn't have a lot of vibration in the handlebars itself. Um, so that's going to be just more comfortable. Overall, you're not going to get just a ton of vibration and kind of numbness in your fingers. So that's definitely going to add into the overall ergonomics of this bike. All right, guys. Well, next up for this motorcycle review, we are going to talk about the technology on this BMW F900R. And this is the section where I think this motorcycle is going to really excel and separate itself from a lot of the other motorcycles in this middleweight naked bike category. So some of these motorcycles that you're gonna look at, whether you're looking at the Yamaha MT-09, uh, Kawasaki's uh, Z900R, or even KTM's 890R, are gonna be on the sportier side. I mean, the motorcycles are gonna put out a little bit more power, especially those with uh, the triple engines on them, but those motorcycles are not going to hold a candle to BMW's technology package. And if you have done any research at all into BMW motorcycles, you know that these motorcycles have just a fantastic amount of technology on the bikes themselves and this motorcycle is no different. So first off, right in front of us, you can see that this motorcycle is going to have an enormous, beautiful TFT dash display that they have used on a lot of other motorcycles. So, so this is going to be the six inch TFT display on this motorcycle. But I think BMW, as I've said it before, is making the best TFT displays on the market today. So this motorcycle, you're gonna have uh, tons of different menus and options on here including a nifty little sport option that you can change the display of the bike. So on this display, you're gonna get the lean angle, you're gonna get the maximum braking, um, you're gonna get dynamic traction control as it's activated and you're gonna be able to see all of those things. So very similar if you guys have any experience with uh, the S1000R, um, S1000RR, or any of the M motorcycles, they're gonna have the sport TFT display option. So this motorcycle does come with it, which is pretty fancy and fun if you are in the mood to kind of go through and rip canyons. So, 
in addition to that um, you're gonna have all of your vehicle information on this and this is absolutely wild for a motorcycle under ten thousand dollars you're gonna get your internal engine temperature you're gonna get the amount of miles left until empty you're gonna get your battery um, voltage on here you're gonna get active tire pressure on the front and rear of your bike and a lot more like current journey you're on um, the bike's actually gonna tell you when you should take a break um, all sort of sorts of fancy features like that on this motorcycle so in addition to that this motorcycle um, with the comfort package is going to come with heated grips so you have that as an option um, accessible just through this little button right here as i mentioned earlier on this video you are going to have the different ride modes from rain mode to road to dynamic to dynamic pro all of those options and those are going to transform the motorcycle's throttle responsiveness uh, suspension itself and just how the bike feels and so all of that is accessible at the touch of a button you're going to have bmw's dynamic esa suspension that is going to work into the, some of those different ride modes or if you want to mix things up and say uh, you want a more snappy throttle in dynamic mode but you want the suspension to be a little bit more plush that is all accessible through uh, this little button right here in addition to that um, traction control you can turn on and off on the fly which is nice all right moving on uh, you are going to have cruise control standard on this motorcycle and that's going to be a very similar uh, cruise control that all of the bmw motorcycles are going to have just this little notch that you slide over hit the button and boom you're good to go a very simple um, intuitive cruise control that i very much appreciate on all of the bmw motorcycles uh, you're going to have fully adjustable levers for your front brake and your clutch and so you can adjust them to be closer or a little bit further away depending on your liking not really technology but it kind of fits within all of this um, one of the things that i'll say is a little bit of a weird thing that they included on this motorcycle is the ability to have a navigation unit right here um, it, i mean i guess it's cool if you want it this just feels so intrusive to me and just kind of like it doesn't fit within the overall aesthetic of the motorcycle itself so i would say that if i got this motorcycle and i purchased it i would probably remove this and just use this area to mount my phone and kind of have that level of navigation there but cool i guess if you're a fan of using the garmin units or anything like that that just to me feels like more of like an adventure bike kind of thing than really a naked bike option but you are going to have it so there you go this motorcycle is going to have full led lights all the way around it is going to have a dynamic headlight which is really just stunning this bike works very very well at nighttime um, you're not going to feel like you need more light so bmw definitely did a good job in that so yeah i think you know as i was looking at this bike as i was kind of comparing it to the different bikes in the naked bike category uh to me this bike just has so much tech packed onto it especially when you consider that this motorcycle retails at under ten thousand dollars i mean this this is just such a huge win in the technology world and i think for the person that really values all of the bells and whistles on a motorcycle that wants the quick shifter that wants the heated grips on the bike itself that wants a big easy to read dash that wants all of the onboard computer stats like tire pressure monitor um, electronic fuel gauge like all of that kind of stuff this bike is going to be the perfect motorcycle which transitions into our final section and i'm sure the section that all of you guys have been wondering about is who is the intended rider for the 2023 bmw f 900 r motorcycle and i will say this bike is going to be perfect for somebody who wants a motorcycle first of all kind of in that ten thousand dollar range so this motorcycle is going to retail for a little bit under ten thousand dollars at around nine thousand but by the time you add all of the comfort things like the heated grips the quick shifter just some of the package that i feel like you're going to want if you're going to want this motorcycle um, it's going to be around eleven thousand dollars so for the type of person that is going to want to spend that money uh, probably going to be maybe a little bit of a younger rider maybe you're newer to the world uh, you don't necessarily want the hyper naked bikes that are just going to rip your arms off um, this bike is going to be a phenomenal motorcycle so this bike is going to be for somebody that doesn't necessarily need
need, you know, 160 to 200 horsepower on a motorcycle, that's fine in that 100 uh, horsepower, you know, 60 foot pounds of torque world that's going to want something that is manageable to use on the weekends, maybe use this as a daily commuter, um, does have some ways to mount uh, some top case luggage to it. Uh, this bike is going to be great. And more than anything else this bike is meant for somebody who really wants all of the tech bells and whistles on their motorcycle so this is somebody that's going to want the cruise control they're going to want the electronic display if all of that kind of stuff matters to you and you want to feel like uh, you have an onboard computer on the motorcycle itself which really you do um, this motorcycle is going to be perfect for you and so yeah it, it feels like BMW um, is really trying to compete with the Yamaha MT-09, KTM's 890R, Kawasaki's 900 motorcycle, and really kind of take a, a slice out of that middle weight naked bike category. I'll say that this bike is not the most fun naked bike that I've ever ridden in my life. There are certainly uh, more exhilarating naked bikes out there, even in the middle weight class, um, but this bike is, I think, the best overall naked bike in the middle weight category because it's going to give you enough power to be usable it's going to give you dynamic uh, suspension the ergonomics are good on this bike it's comfortable it's not too aggressive and then with all of the creature comforts that are going to come in this electronic package i feel like bmw has kind of just hit the nail on the head and really done uh, a really good job at a lot of different categories which seems to be kind of bmw's um, just major design philosophy of how they design motorcycles is they want it to be just really really good all around bikes at least for the majority of their bikes themselves so that's it that's the review of the 2023 bmw f 900 r uh, thanks again to the guys over at Irv Seaver for letting us use this motorcycle, taking it out for a couple days. And hey, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about the BMW F900R motorcycle, especially as it relates to some of the other middleweight naked bikes in its category. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this channel. Hey, if you haven't done so already, please like this video itself. Subscribe to our channel. That helps us out more than you know. Turn notifications on. And if you have not done so already, please go over to Ride Motos. That is www.ridemotos.com. Or you can check us out on social media at Ride Motos Official for all of your motorcycle content needs. We are putting out videos like this where we're constantly reviewing different motorcycles. Stay tuned for more bikes coming up on the channel as we dive into all different kinds of motorcycles and motorcycle classes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Till we meet again, peace.